The next thing we're going to look at is the tangent velocity, which is here. And the tangent velocity works by adding a velocity to the particle that slings it around the outside of the particle emitter. Now, the particle emitter here is ellipsoid. And an ellipsoid can be a sphere, and in this case it is. So these particles get created within a space that's about that size there. And if we look down at this ellipsoid setting here and change this to 2, 2, 2, you'll see that the emitter size has suddenly doubled. If you want a point that they all come from, you can set it down to 0, and then the particles will come from a very, very small point. Now, let's go back to, let's say, 2, 2, 2 for a larger ellipsoid. The particles at the moment, when they come out, they have a particular random velocity added to them because we've put it here, and they continue off in the direction that they're initially given. You can also add this tangent velocity. So let's add it in the y and have a look what happens. The particles now start to spin around the ellipsoid before they fly off. Um, if we speed that effect up, you'll be able to see it there. They're sort of given an orbitable fling as such. So you're creating a vortex out of this. Now, if we just uh, stop playing that and go back to the scene view, um, if we rotate this cube so that it's, I should say the particle system, so that it's upright, Our tangent velocity is going around the x axis here, so it's rotating around the plane that's horizontal in that respect. If we change that to y, we will get a different effect of its rotating, and you can see it's going more or less around that way. So we can create an interesting vortex if we go back to this, let's say, going fast around, and we then make the upward force of the particle system and run that, we get, well, it's a slow kind of tornado effect um, if you've got a good imagination. So the last thing I'd like to show you are the one-shot parameters and the um, minimum emitter range values. So if we go back to running a particle system, as you can see here, I'll just set that back to zero for the moment. Right, so you have an ellipsoid, particles get created anywhere inside that ellipsoid, and then they get a velocity added to them. I've turned off all the velocities for this demonstration. What one shot does is to give you all the particles produced in the one go. And then the emitter does not emit particles again until all of those particles have died off. So if we turn that on, we can see that we get bursts of particles. And all the random factors still apply. So if we, say, move these like that, it's still not going to create another burst until they've all disappeared. Now, the final thing is this minimum emitter range. And what it does is it sets the range, which is inside 
of the ellipsoid that these particles are going to be spawned. So if we've set that to 1, particles will be spawned on the exterior of the ellipsoid. So instead of being created all inside, they're all on the surface of the sphere, which you have to imagine because we can't really see it. So notice that you're getting a much nicer circle there. Now if you want them halfway within so that they get created sort of from oops sorry from this point outwards uh, then you set that to halfway. If we set that not that this to zero then we go back to getting particles created anywhere inside the ellipsoid. If we go into the game view we probably get a better look at what's happening. The first part allows us to change the colors of the particles. So over their lifetime from when they first born you can set the color let's say we're going to make that red like that and you can see that they start out red and as they get older they become white before they finally extinguish. If we make it red for the next one they'll be red for longer and then let's set something that's a sort of a yellow in the center and then there are two lots of white so there's our particles changing color as they grow now if we give them a force we'll be able to see them moving out slowly. Let's uh, make that a bit bigger. Okay, so they're red in the center and as they fly out they become white. We can also make them grow in size so they can start off at little normal size and before they die they grow bigger. So if we put that to 5 we get something like that. Which looks like a bit of a plasma ball um, and you can see that you've got the red and the yellow in the center. Now if you want these particles to actually go out further from here you would need to go back into this uh, particle emitter settings and make their lives longer so that you do get more of them coming out as you can see there. Now if we go back into here um, this world rotation will allow you to add a rotation on to the particles which is pretty similar to the tangent ones we looked at before. If you have a look here we can just zoom out a bit. You can make them spin quite radically <laughs> or if you want a less effect you can slow that down. Uh, there. So they're spinning around the world x-axis. Change it to the up axis. Get that sort of an effect. And if you want to force them upwards you can add an upwards force in the y direction here as well. And what you end up with is well, not quite a fire effect, but you can imagine how if you adjust the values from here you can create a burning fire with smoke that comes up. Okay, finally we have a dampening effect. If it's set at 1, the particles do not slow down over their lifetime, but you can make them slow down by setting that to a different value between 1 and 0. So here they're totally slowing down which means they're not moving at all with the force. 